He is a best-selling author, a motivational speaker, a radio host, and the founder of Heartlight Ministries, and he's here to talk about his role in the film, Connect. Please welcome back to our house, teen whisperer himself, Mark Craigston. Welcome back, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, Mark. I, yeah. You know, you have the yeah. teen whisperer, which I've got to learn some of these skills. There you go. Basically because you've been able to, you know, help teens through some yeah, of those yeah, darker yeah. times in their life. Let's talk about this movie. Kirk Hammer comes to you and says, hey, I'm doing this movie called Connect. Yeah, what he was doing was putting together a group of people that can just give him some direction. He's got six kids and he's trying to figure out how do I do this right. with smartphones and everything else, what the Internet is doing with this whole culture. And so he just assembled some people and happened to call me and said, would so you be a part? Yeah. yeah. And so, so I said, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. It's a wonderful film that really addresses and gives people yeah. some guidelines as to where to what go to and how, to, how yeah. to handle that. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of the scenes from the film. Let's take a look at the trailer. I decided I needed to get to the bottom of understanding how technology and my kids were interacting. Unfortunately, a lot of parents are saying, just do whatever you want. 50% of kids feel they're addicted to their social media. Yeah, if you're a kid with a smartphone, you could look up anything you want. It's a free-for-all. You can look at pornography. There's constant reinforcement, pings, tings, new friends. I got to create my life the way I want it to be seen. It wasn't my true reality. My daughter has tons of Instagram friends, but she has no friends. They're more like strangers that have been identified. The words they start giving you is the words you believe. That becomes their life, their social media world. But that world can be quickly upended. Serious stuff. So Kirk was really looking for a way to build walls around his kids to sort of protect them. But you say a better safeguard is learning the difference between teaching and training. Oh, yeah, yeah, What yeah. do you mean? Well, you know, I, I, I think there's this, this attitude that we have that we've got to keep our kids from everything that <clears throat> can possibly poison them or cause them to go astray. And I look at that in the earlier years of a child's life, absolutely that's what we need to be doing. Mm. But at some point, you've got to start making the transition and allowing kids to be exposed to what the world's going to be like and move from a teaching model to a training model so okay. that I'm giving them the opportunity to now learn how to do that. And that's usually starting a little bit earlier on before they shut you out and quit listening to you mm -hmm. in their teen years. Do something a little bit early where you can help them to, to learn how to em empower them almost, if you will, to, to handle that which they're going to be exposed to eventually anyway. So those years, you say, it shuts you out. Uh, so you're saying it's too late at, at one point or another? Or no? Yeah, I don't think it's too late. But, but I do think we can go back and change the way that we've engaged with our kids to prepare them to be involved in a world that's contrary to what right. most of us would say that we'd want to be raised in. And so it's just helping kids, I think. I, I want to teach you how to handle this, but I also want to train you and let you start making some decisions and take control of your life so that they're not 17 years old and I'm controlling them yeah. sure. on their smartphone. So yeah. it's important to teach them so that when you are training them, they will make the right choice. Well, I hope that they will, and that means you have to start pretty early. Yeah. I mean, we, we do this. We protect our kids way too much. I mean, that's why the American Medical Association has increased the age of adolescence stage 27. Oh, my. Wait, you know, adolescence at 27? Isn't that amazing? American Journal of Adolescent Psychiatry. Yeah. What? Yeah. Well, not. Move out. Yeah. yeah. Wait. It's not. Our, our kids are not maturing what? as fast as they used to mature. Oh, and no. part of it is because we want to protect them. We feel like there's so many evil things out there. Oh, well, I, I'm one of those guys that feels like we need to prepare kids for that. You can either raise yeah. your kids to live in a zoo or you can prepare them to survive in the jungle. Oh, and I'm oh, one of those guys that really it. feels a little bit you know, too late when we try to do that at age 16, 17. We've got to start when they're 9 and 10 years old. Yeah. yeah. I mean, their schools are already giving them iPads mm -hmm. to work on at, in first and second grade. They already have access to things. Yeah. And so if I don't speak into their lives at an early age, then I'm going to miss the opportunity. Right. You have three zookeepers right. to your right. <laughs> yeah. um. And Glenn has, has three animals living with him. <laughs> and so one of my questions is, like, what age do you think is the right age for them to get their first phone. Like yeah, that's a, a great question. A, a rising yeah. second grader. Now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? I mean, this is controversial, but I think like eight or nine. Okay. Yeah. And you can what you do is you get very involved with them at eight or nine, where you where you kind of circle up everybody around them and you stay on top of them and you're very intentional about who they can get, be exposed to, what apps they can go to, but you start teaching them and training them 
while they're still listening to you because in a few years they're going to quit listening to you. Oh, so you say not just a phone, you think a smartphone. They have a well, smartphone at eight or nine. They have access to, right? yeah, they have access to the internet already. Right. I mean, what I would do is limit the apps that they can go to and all that. But we just don't eliminate everything. At some point, your child is going to have to make decisions wow. in the right. real world. And the earlier I start, the better off I'm going to be. I, I told Coco 16, so I guess I got to <laughs> <laughs> Wow. My wow. master gave my niece a phone at 11, and I was beside myself. Yeah. Yeah. She said, you're yeah. going to be the strictest mom. Calm down. Wow. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah. Maria, where do you fall on that? Yeah, well, so my son is four and a half. And, but right now, a lot of parents um, who yeah. have kids that age give, not have as their own, but like when you're in a restaurant. So my question is, when I'm in a restaurant situation with family or friends yeah. and all the other kids are holding on to phones like this, and how do I handle that situation with my son? Because I end up yeah. giving in, but I want him to, to learn how to be at a restaurant and not be on a phone. Yeah, you know what? I, I mean, it's it's good to give them. It, it's fun for them to have your phone or an iPad because it makes for a nicer dinner, right? Well, yeah. You don't have to yeah. deal with yeah. it. But the problem is you want your child to learn how to engage with adults and how to learn to not be entertained all the time. Right. And so at right. some point, I think we do give it to them. And then at other times we say, just for the sake of them learning how to engage, then mm -hmm. I stop. You know, it, you can't say I'm going to get my child addicted to always being entertained at the dinner table and then be concerned when they're 13 and 14 right. that they never yeah. speak to anybody yeah. anymore mm -hmm. because they need to be entertained. Right. Yeah. yeah, so true. Orly, where do you stand on this? Oh, my gosh, my brain's exploding. Yes. Um, well, I have a question actually about, I know there are certain, I don't know if it's like apps or devices that can kind of prevent your kids from visiting certain sites. You yeah. can like block oh, things. Yeah. Is that like a good way or do we want to expose them to it and they need to use their own like self-control to not visit it or something you know i think anything that we can do to help at the beginning stages to protect them we've got to do that yeah but a parent's got to be very intentional about being engaged with their child during that time and then as they get older i loosen the ropes a little bit when they're 14 i back off i'm now training by the age 16 17 i'm letting them have full access i'm not i'm not watching them all the time always hovering over them because yeah. I am training them to be able to make great decisions in their life once they turn 18. You know, for better or for worse, I just was thinking about this today, and I have not heard my children in a long, long time and recall them saying, I'm bored, like I used to as a kid. Yeah. Because well, I have so much to, to gain, to sit, now. and with the electronics yeah. in this world that we live in now. Yeah. And within boredom so comes creativity and comes Right, so because many. I wonder if it changes their brain waves. Like, it scares it, me a little bit. Alexandra will look at it, and she's like, rah, rah, and it's it's almost yeah. like yeah. mesmerizing. Yeah, laser focus. Yeah, it consumes them. Yeah. And, and, and I, think, I think we're all getting consumed a little bit. Uh, we're those pioneer parents that are trying to figure out how do we do this and engage our kids so that they aren't so consumed that they miss out on maturity, mm -hmm. developing responsibility, yeah. taking control, creativity. and learning creativity. how to engage yeah. with creativity with other sure. people. We need that, but it's both and. It can't be either or. I can't keep them from everything and expect that they're just going to gain it on their own and one day yeah. be enlightened. I've got to be a part of their life and be very intentional. I just want to tap you twice and like you. Just to <laughs> Uh, exactly. You can find more information like about Mark's books and about Connect at the movie at HallmarkChannel.com. <laughs> and get, I do, I, I love Very him. good, Mark. Um, yeah, thumbs very up, clever. okay? Uh, and get to know Mark <laughs> yeah. on the social media exactly. as well. Oh my Don't. gosh, it's complicated, you guys. It's very complicated. <laughs> you know what's not complicated? Ken's segment's coming up next. No. Yep, coming up next, I'm going to show you the three best things I found at the Pinners Conference. <laughs>